Hey guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome back to EDM Pro Tips. I tried to record this a second ago, but it kind of got cut off because I went too long. So, I'm going to see if I can shorten this. Okay, so this video is going to have three sections. First of all, when do you upgrade? Second of all, how much should you upgrade? Third of all, what order should you do? So, a lot of topics in this video, and last time it took me a long time to cover them. So, um, I'm sorry this video is going to be late. Partially because I still need to edit it, and it's uh, it's already kind of like when it's supposed to be posted right now. So, but anyway, um, I kind of got lost earlier. I was setting up Twitch to live streams, but um, hopefully we should be able to do live streams soon. Keep an eye out for that. Um, anyway, let's get into today's topic. So, um, first of all, how do you know when you need to upgrade something? I'm going to talk about studio monitors right now because studio monitors are uh, my first suggestion for like a real piece of studio equipment. Um, I'll get into the list later, like I said. But I kind of want to talk about this one because it's a great example. So, you've been producing for a while. You kind of know um, my tracks sound okay on my speakers. And when I listen to professional tracks, they sound better, but I can't really tell what to do. Um, I mean, I don't know what the, like, really how to make my tracks better and stuff like that. Um, but I listen to these pro tracks and they do sound better. I just don't know what it really is. And um, so then you, you kind of just you listen to your tracks a lot. And then you go into a store like. Guitar Center. No, I'm not endorsing them. I don't care what store you go into, just as long as it's a music store that has studio monitors. And um, you bring a flash driver or a CD with your with some of your song, some of the songs that you've mixed and some of the professional songs that you really like. Um, and then you listen to it on there. Now the question you should ask yourself is when I'm listening to my tracks, can I tell what needs to be fixed to make it like a pro track? Um, because if you can tell and you can instantly tell, um, oh yeah, I just need EQ that there, EQ that there, boost the volume of that. Um, cut down on the reverb on that one, and then uh, and then it'll sound a lot more like a pro track. If you can tell that instantly when you're listening on these uh, test speakers at one of these music stores, then um, then you know instantly it's time you start saving for that upgrade. Um, now most of the time, what you'll end up with actually doing is you'll be working in your track, and you'll be like, uh, it needs to be better, it needs to be better, but uh, I need this piece of equipment, so it'll be better. And then, um, and then, you know, let's say you go in and you just kind of try out that equipment, but you're not actually bringing in your own tracks. You're not really checking with tracks that you've listened to on a, like, tons of different speakers and headphones and stuff. Um, then you go in and you're just like, oh, wow, this sounds really good. Or, oh, wow, this has a lot of cool features. So what's the point of upgrading? You don't know what you really want or what you really need. So, like, so that's my suggestion. You, you need to, first of all, get a track, one track, maybe two, that um, you just listen to on every single speaker you could come across. And um, you really get used to the sound of that that particular track. And you just get used to what you could, should kind of expect. And um, then you go in and listen on these on these speakers, these studio monitors, and kind of tell, is it true to that track? I know I've heard it on tons of different systems, so I know what I should expect from this track. And do these speakers really show that track at its full potential? Um, so, um, so that's, that's one of the things you should do, but it's not going to really tell you if it's time to upgrade. What tells you if it's time to upgrade is when you get your tracks, you copy them off your computer and like when you've worked as hard as you possibly can and you're sure that's the best you can do with what you have, then you bring them over to these professional speakers and, um, you listen to them on those and you, if you could instantly tell that, um, oh, I just need to do A, B, C, and D. If I have my computer right now, I could actually do it and then it sound good. Then, um, then it's time to upgrade. It's it's that simple. So, um, but with other pieces of equipment, it's not as easy to follow. Um, like sometimes you you know you have audio interfaces. It's very difficult to tell the sound quality between audio interfaces, and it's a lot more about the features. Like, but are you really going to use those features? That's what you need to ask yourself. Do I need automatic gain control or something like that? I don't even know if they put those on audio interfaces. But um, but just kind of different things like that. Do I need eight inputs or am I only good with four? I mean, I wanted to get one of those 816 input uh, recording interfaces when I first started, but now I'm at the point where I'm just like, eh, maybe I'll just get a $100 one. Uh, right now, the one I'm using is 20 bucks, so I'm actually thinking I might need to upgrade sometime. But uh, but you can, that actually kind of shows I'm still using the audio interface from ages ago, even though I have studio monitors and um, and high pretty high quality headphones. Um, I'm still using a pretty bad audio interface, to be honest. Um, and so, so it really shows you that there are some things that you'll need to upgrade because you could really feel it holding you back, but in other things, it's not actually holding you back. It's just getting a better one might be a little nicer. 
So, um, so that's my suggestion telling you, you know, when should you upgrade? It's when you try something out and you could feel instantly this is going to make a huge difference in everything I do. Whether it's a synthesizer, you could like download the demo and be like, oh my goodness, I could make so much better sounds in the synthesizer than I can in ES2. And it's so easy and it's going to like revolutionize my workflow. Buy it. Um, that's, 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 you know, that's really easy to tell. Um, and then, you know, uh, also if you, if you've tried to record some things, but you don't have a studio, um, a studio microphone, AKA condenser microphone, um, then you, you'll really, you know, you really want to get a good quality recording in your track, but you can't really get it all that good. Then, um, then if you get one of those condenser microphones and you, and you, you know, try something with it, or even actually, if you're not using a condenser microphone, the step up to a condenser microphone is just drastic. So you might just want to do that. But, uh, but anyway, you can tell when your gear is holding you back. Um, you just need to try a gear that's a little bit better and, uh, and then you'll instantly be able to know if it's holding you back or if you just want something that's new and shiny. So, um, so yes, my suggestion is actually go into a store and try out, uh, their equipment. But, uh, I know some people like they want to shop online, just like check everybody's reviews, find the best thing out there, but that won't really tell you when it's time to upgrade. Um, so yes, go into those stores, even if it's like a two hour drive to the nearest music store, uh, just kind of set, so like get really prepared for it, get a lot of your tracks. And then, like I said, get those, those one or two tracks that you just listen to on every system. For me, it's suddenly summer by Armin van Buren. Um, it used to be, um, uh, snow patrols chasing cars. Uh, but I since switched over because, um, it, my music style was slightly different back when I was using that one. Um, so now I use Suddenly Summer by Armin van Buren. And, um, not only do I use that when I'm looking to kind of, you know, uh, when I get new headphones and stuff like that, and I, and I test them out to see how good they are, that's the track I base everything off of. And, um, and then when I go into actually, I, t I've tuned a couple, uh, audio systems. And when I tune those audio systems, I use that track as a reference. Uh, just because I'm so used to that track. I know how that track is supposed to sound. Uh, because I've heard it in so many different ways. I know, like, um, if you just take out the speakers, and if I were to just, like, have the this track running in my head, I know what it's supposed to sound like. I know what Armin van Buren meant the track to sound like. So I could go in and actually actually judge speaker quality by listening to that track. So that's, that's the point you need to get to with a couple tracks. You could actually really tell, um, is this track shining through where it needs to shine through? And then uh, also with your tracks, can you uh, can you tell? That's that's going to be the determining factor. Can you tell? One of the other things to just kind of look for when choosing the right speakers is um, how well does this track that you've gotten so used to shine through? Um, for instance, there was uh, I was looking at KRK speakers and Yamaha speakers uh, when I went in. This was the first time I ever actually listened to uh, speakers to kind of compare and actually see what I'd be looking to buy, and. Um, there was, uh, I was listening, the track I was using that time, I didn't actually have Suddenly Summer at that time. So I was using some other Electro House tracks. I think I was using um, uh, a remix of, uh, God, goodness, what was it? Um, Summertime Sadness. I think it was, uh, it was Cedric's remix of Summertime Sadness. I don't remember if that's how you pronounce his name or if that's what his name is. But anyway, uh, I was using that track and... Um, and I listened to the Yamaha speakers and the KRK speakers, and I could really tell, despite the fact that the Yamaha speakers sounded nicer, it wasn't it wasn't really showing me uh, what the track was meant to sound like. That's why I ended up going with the KRK ones, because it really felt like, okay, when the artist wanted me to listen to this song, that's what they wanted me to hear. They didn't want me to hear this kind of um, nice, smooth, clean sort of sound. They wanted me to hear a heavier sound that was a lot more present and a lot more powerful. So that's kind of why I ended up going for those speakers. A lot of people say, yeah, that's because it's hi-fi and it's not actually recording equipment when you got those KRK speakers or junk speakers. That's not true. A lot of uh, EDM producers go with KRK speakers um, just because it's kind of like the signature sound of EDM that, that EDM has developed. So that's why a lot of people choose that. So if you get Yamaha speakers, they might be better speakers but um, but it's not going to be the same feeling when you mix to them um, because the, the tracks are kind of meant to be sort of a different style almost. But that's kind of like just a tangent there. So, uh, but that ties into the next thing. How far should you upgrade? And the reason that ties into the next thing is, um, you know, when you're looking for things, you kind of need to uh, compare and contrast and you got to know what you're looking for before you go in to actually try things out. Like uh, when I went in to get my headphones, 
I already knew what I was getting, but I still wanted to compare just like finally know, um, is this the right thing? Because I, I looked up a whole bunch of reviews, compared and contrasted, and then I found the headphones that I wanted. And then I went in, I talked to some people about, some of the people there about it, and um, and then I actually tried them out, and I, you know, I really, I really kind of like cross-referenced. So, um, so how far should you upgrade? Oh, excuse me. Um, so um, you, you kind of got to keep in mind what you have and how much you want to spend. Those are the two most determining factors uh, about how far should you upgrade. Um, so for instance, if you have speakers that are uh, under $100 for both or for each, then you'll want to go up to speakers that are at least $150 each um, or maybe even up to $200 each. So, um, so it's kind of the thing, um, the thing I kind of came up with is you spend double the price of your last piece of equipment with the exception of it being a hundred, uh, under a hundred dollars. If your last piece of equipment in that area was under a hundred dollars, then, um, then you want to spend more than double. Usually you want to get out of the $100 price range. Um, so if you have like $30 headphones, don't get $60 headphones. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. If you have $30 headphones, don't get $60 headphones. It won't make a difference. Go over a hundred dollars. Now, if you had $70 headphones, then you might want to go, then the double rule kind of works. You might want to go up to $150 headphones, maybe $200. Um, but you just want to get, if you're in the $100 range and you're looking at that double the cost of the previous one, then, um, then you want to, uh, get out of the $100 range because the $100 range, um, is it's, it's a lot of low end equipment. Uh, the only good equipment, good, solid, good sounding equipment you could get under a hundred dollars that'll really last you a long time is audio interfaces. Audio interfaces will last you a long time because essentially the quality of audio interfaces is kind of like across the board. It's really good. It's just a matter of what features do you want? And to be honest, if you're an EDM producer, then usually you don't need a lot of features in your audio interface. You just kind of need speakers, speaker output, headphone output, and then maybe like two inputs for recording, um, vocals or, or guitar or something like that. So you don't need like 18 inputs and eight outputs for your, um, for your audio interface usually. Now there are some cases that you might have like two sets of studio monitors that you want to go through and you want to be able to A, B them. So turn them on and off, switch between them. Then you might need a more expensive audio interface. But, um, but most audio interfaces, you could get like one for 80, a hundred dollars and that one will last you, I don't know, almost your entire career. Uh, because typically when you go in, I think from what I've heard, uh, you have your studio. If you, if you get into the pro scene, you have your studio. And then sometimes you'll go into a dedicated studio that you actually, you know, check your mixes sometimes. And, uh, alternatively you'll do collaborations in those studios. Uh, but that's if you actually get into the pro, uh, the pro field and you're actually really a professional. Um, if you're just kind of, you know, by yourself, then chances are you won't ever need to upgrade from that $100 one. So don't worry about audio interface. That's the one exception. Otherwise, how far should you upgrade is usually double the price of the last piece of equipment you bought. So, um, so if you got a $100 microphone, um, then you might want to get a $200 microphone. If you got, if you got $150 per speaker studio monitor, then, um, then you want to go up to $300. That's basically the way it goes. Now you don't want to go for less because then you're kind of, you're not spending enough money. Um, you're just, the upgrade you're doing is going to be like, it's very, going to be very subtle. It's not going to be as much as, you know, uh, as much as you could be getting and you're still spending, um, quite a bit of money for that small upgrade. So my suggestion is just save that little bit extra more, a little bit extra, a <laughs> little bit, just save a little bit extra and, um, and go up that one, that one more step. So, so there were just kind of like a nice rule of thumb, uh, double the price of the last thing you had. And, um, so that's, that's not going to be in all cases. And sometimes you might want to go up a little bit more. Sometimes you might want to go down a little bit less. I don't suggest going down less. If anything, spend more, uh, because in the world of audio equipment, it gets expensive really fast. So if you're not spending a lot, then chances are you're not going to get a lot. Uh, but at the same time, there is kind of for different pieces of equipment. I'll talk about in the respective videos, uh, different pieces of equipment when it hits a certain point, you're just paying for a slightly very marginal difference, despite the fact that you're spending thousands of dollars more. So um, there is, it's called diminishing returns for those of you that haven't heard of it, but there comes a price where you just kind of, you know, you, it, just, it feels like you kind of hit a wall and you're only getting slightly better things. I'll talk about that in other videos, 
But uh, for now, most of you that are that don't know when you're supposed to be upgrading, you're you, you could kind of stick to the uh, double the price of what you have already. Um, so that's that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Um, now, you know, I'm not going to go into the really, really, really expensive gear ever in any of my videos because I can't say anything about that because I've never used it. I've never, um, actually the mix engineers I've met don't use that equipment. Um, it's just, it, it's just insanely overpriced and they're, they're, they, they get a, they make a living off of getting a very, a really good sound, not getting a sound that other mix engineers will be like, Oh, how'd you get that sound? I'd like to have you, you know, do this one other thing for me. They're, they have clients. They don't have, um, other engineers that they're trying to work with. So they don't get that like $20,000 for one piece of equipment. Usually they'll cap it out at like $5,000 per piece of equipment, something like that. But still that's a lot of money. So anyway, it gets expensive really fast. Um, so now third final topic, what order should you upgrade? Now, this is the only area where it's what do you want as the primary thing. Um, because the other ones, you don't want to think about what you want. Because if you look at what you want, you're easily going to get up to really expensive equipment that you really don't need. So um, so the order is the only thing uh, that you should be really looking at uh, what do you want. Now, everybody wants a better piece of equipment. So when to upgrade, don't think about what you want. Think about when is your gear holding you back. Um, how far to upgrade, don't think about what you want, think about what you need and what your price range is and what you already have. Um, so, so if there's something holding you back, then you do want to go and get the thing that's not holding you back in that regard, but also you kind of need to look at what you have and how far you could actually upgrade. Um, because otherwise if it's just what you want, you'll just like spend way too much money on stuff you don't need. So, uh, and then the third and final thing, like I said, is the order and what should you upgrade first? And uh, how should you kind of go? First, I want to talk about software. Software is very unique. Um, you could kind of go a whole bunch of different directions with it. And um, there's a really interesting order that you could slice things in. But suffice it to say, buy a digital audio workstation first. My choice is logic. Your choice could be something else. I don't care. Um, there's a whole lot of good ones out there. And um, and there's, all of them are just as good as the next one. It's just kind of like, what workflow do you work best with? So every single one has trials too. Try them out, figure out which one you want, and then buy it. And other software is just going to be sparsely kind of tossed in there. Synthesizers, I suggest somewhere else. And then, like, buying a compressor, a better compressor, that's somewhere else. So, um, so anyway, let me just go into this. Okay, my suggestion of the first piece of equipment you buy, other than the digital audio workstation, is, the, um, is a computer. If you have a bad computer and it is doing, uh, you're, like, running 20 tracks, 30 tracks, and it does the um, audio engine overload or your hard drive is parked, cannot process all the data, something like that, whenever you're playing it back, then the first thing you need to save for is a computer. It's going to be pretty expensive, uh, seeing as though most of you guys are going to be buying Macs, um, and those are cost and armor leg. So uh, you do want to save up for one of those because, trust me, it will revolution revolutionize your workflow when you don't have to worry about your computer freezing every time you hit the stink of play button. I had that before. Trust me. I... All my tutorials are on my new computer, but for the first year that I did Logic, I was running on a, a first-generation Intel Mac Mini. That thing stunk, and it would freeze up as like as soon as I got over 20 tracks, it'd start freezing up whenever I played something. If I had a reverb on all 20 of those tracks, then it would hardly even play for like a split second. So when I when I actually invested buying a new computer. It made a big difference, and I could actually creatively work, and I didn't have to worry about freezing tracks on freezing tracks, getting rid of tracks I didn't need, and I could actually just let my creativity flow. So uh, I do suggest getting a computer as the first piece of hardware. And um, and then from then is something that some people are going to actually, they're going to skip over something, and they're actually not going to do this. But my next suggestion is studio monitors. Studio monitors make a huge difference really fast. Um, when you actually get to the point to where studio monitors will make a difference for you, like like I said, you feel you've tried them out and uh, and you need to upgrade, and yes, please go try them out. I know a lot of people probably like to shop online, but spend the time, like I said, um, get just like cut out uh, some time, even if the nearest one's two hours away, just cut out some time and go actually listen to studio monitors so you can tell if you need to upgrade or if you actually need to practice. So, uh, but if you need to upgrade to studio monitors and you upgrade to studio monitors, it's going to make, it's going to literally be a drastic jump 
in the quality of your mixes. You could tell my first mix on my studio monitors was my track um, Mid City Rising, and that track I didn't actually do a lot of mixing. Um, listen to the tracks before it, they sound pretty nasty. That one actually sounds almost mainstream style mix quality, except for the drop. The drop had like way too much bass. Um, but if you listen to the, the Mid City Rising, my re remix of that on my SoundCloud, you could tell that before the previous ones, it's notably better, but at the same time, I wasn't trying to mix on that one. The previous ones, I was spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours trying to mix. But when I got my studio monitors and I did that track, I didn't really have to try all that hard to mix, and it, the results were just so much better. So, no, studio monitors are not going to make you a better, better mix engineer, but when your speakers are holding you back and you get studio monitors, trust me, it's going to be a huge leap. So, uh, but if you don't need them and you don't really know what you're doing, you don't know how to tell the difference between having compression on and off, and uh, you can't really tell what you're doing with the EQs, how to EQ right, then don't buy studio, don't studio level um, monitors because it's just going to be a waste. Uh, because you're going to start working on those, and you're not going to know what you're you're doing, and you're not going to be able to learn as easily as if you have a low level equipment and you're really trying to figure out. What are these EQs doing? Once you learn that, then you can step up. So anyway, anyway, studio monitors, number two, piece of hardware. Uh, then number three is the audio interface because you kind of need a decent audio interface to plug up from your computer to the monitors. Uh, so that's the only reason I stick that one there. And uh, you, you can just plug it in directly into the headphone jack, but that's not going to be as good as if you actually get a audio interface. Um, so I do suggest getting an audio interface because that also allows you to have um, studio monitors as well as headphones plugged in at the same time so you can kind of switch between them really fast without having to unplug and then replug and then unplug and it's so much easier so um, I suggest uh, having a, a audio interface before you get you know uh, usually you'll buy an audio interface and monitors at the same time but if you are not financially in the position to do that then get studio monitors first then the audio interface uh, and then the third thing is mixing headphones now, this is the thing I said most people usually skip over. They usually skip over the studio monitors and go to mixing headphones for two reasons, two main reasons that people do this. And if you're one of those people that want to get good headphones, you probably can relate to one of these two reasons. I do not know, I have yet to hear a case that is not one of these two reasons. One, headphones are a lot cheaper than studio monitors. And I mean a lot cheaper. Like, usually... Um, a really good set of studio monitors, like, I mean, um, high mid-range studio monitors. It'll be 500 bucks per, per speaker. Um, the only reason I say high mid-range is because high-end ones usually start at, like, a grand each, which is pretty insane. So, uh, the, the high end of the mid-range studio monitors are going to be 500 bucks each. That's one grand for both studio monitors. That's a lot of money. High-end headphones, on the other hand, usually you'll spend 500 bucks for a very good set of high-end headphones. Um, that'll pretty pretty much be the only ones you'll ever need to buy. Um, so so it's like it's it's a lot cheaper to just buy headphones. And uh, then the second reason is a lot of people say um, the issue with noise. The speakers make noise. Headphones don't make noise. I live in a dorm. I can't play music loud. Um, I I have a little sister that sleeps. Trust me, I have that. Um, <laughs> So, so you can't use your speakers 90% of the day because someone's sleeping because, I don't know, maybe they have a night shift. So they sleep during the day, so you can't play music during the day. And um, then maybe you have like a little sister that naps or something like that. Or your neighbors hate you because you only have time to produce at night. And so you're playing, you're using your speakers at night and your neighbors can hear it. Or your someone, you know, in the next room over can hear it. And uh, they're bugged because it's 11 o'clock, you're running speakers and... What the heck, man? They're trying to sleep. So the two main reasons, headphones are a lot cheaper, and um, they're, they, 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 don't, they don't make as much noise as studio monitors. That's the two main reasons that people usually get headphones first. I'm going to say this right now. I There's a reason I didn't put headphones first. Um, I got headphones before I got studio monitors. So I can tell you from you know an honest perspective that um, I thought, you know, okay, well, it's not, if I get good headphones and good monitors, there's not going to be that much of a difference. Okay, I should be able to just mix them both. So you right now, those mixes that I did before, um, before the Mid-City Rising track, I had my headphones. And then when I got my studio monitors, I got a jump in, uh, in my quality. Where does that fit in? Well, it just shows you that there was actually a big difference between good studio monitors and good headphones. 
Um, my studio monitors actually cost, uh, for both of them, I think it cost probably 70 bucks more than my headphones, uh, which is not all that much just because I got my studio monitors used, so I was lucky in that regard. Uh, but it's, uh, despite the fact that I didn't spend that much more, it made a huge difference. There's this gap between headphones and studio monitors that you just can't close. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. That's the way it's always going to be. Um, so when you're mixing on studio monitors, almost everybody will tell you this. You'll get a lot better mix, a lot easier on studio monitors than you will on headphones. That's just going to be the way it works. Yes, you can mix on headphones. No, it will not be as easy. And also, it will be a lot harder to get things to translate. I can, If I do a mix on my monitors, when I listen to it on my headphones, it sounds almost exactly the same. If I do a mix on my headphones and I listen to it on my monitors, it sounds a lot different. So, um, so when you do mixes on your monitors, um, then it'll sound a lot better uh, just across all devices than if you do it on your headphones, even if you get used to it. Uh, because like I've been doing a lot of mixes on my headphones, but I still have to check them on my monitors because when I check them on my monitors, monitors it instantly shows me, I need to do this because otherwise my mix is going to be toast. So... Um, so that's why I put headphones as the third piece of, was it third or fourth? Fourth piece of equipment. So you have your computer, monitors, audio interface, headphones. Um, and like I said, the, the headphones are something you just want to jump to first usually because it's just, it's cheaper and it's more convenient. Everyone uses headphones on a regular basis anyway. So you're like, eh, what the heck? It's not that big of a deal. I'll just use these headphones instead and it'll be so much better. No, it won't. Uh, honestly, the yes, getting good headphones for mixing can make a difference, but um, nowhere near as much as studio monitors. Um, there were a lot of people that said that on forums, and I didn't listen to them. I'm like, well, I can't use speakers most of the day anyway, so it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, when I got studio monitors, I learned that it does matter. So I, I actually, you know, despite the fact that I only had a couple of hours to mix each day when I got the studio monitors first, it was a huge difference. Okay, now the other thing. Studio monitors make noise. That's what a lot of people say, and they'll say, you know, my neighbors will be bugged, my roommates will be bugged. Um, I, I propose they will only be bugged if they're in the same room as you. How on earth is that true, you ask? Now, there's something that, that is said often about mixing. If you mix at a low volume level, and you get a really good mix, it'll translate a lot better than if you have a mix that you were doing at a high volume level. This is very, very true. If I do a mix at a low level, I'll have a very good balance between my different instruments and everything will sit nicely. But if I do a mix at a loud level, sometimes I'll let things go a little bit too loud. And then when I s turn down the volume, um, like my hi-hat will stand out way too much and I'll really tell. So why am I telling you this now? The volume level that's low is actually pretty stinking low. Um, you actually need to have it when you're doing low. I don't mean like ear level and not blasting loud. I mean like when you bring it down to low, it's like uh, you should just be able to hear it about as well as you hear your um, the speakers on your phone or your um, or like your iPad or, or tablet or something. That's how loud your speakers should be. It's that's pretty stinking low for these huge speakers. Why are you doing that? Despite the fact that you're turning it down, these speakers are actually really good speakers. They're made for studio work, and they're also made so that when you turn it down, you could really hear those fine details still. So, um, so it does actually, you can actually mix at a really low level and, um, it will not, if you like have a baby sister sleeping in the room next door, she won't hear it. Um, the only one that would hear it feasibly is, excuse me, someone that's sharing a room with you. And so that's why I suggest if, if the issue is volume level, then just get the studio monitors and run it on low. You'll get so much better than mixes than if you run headphones. Like I said, trust me, I'm one of those people who wanted to get headphones because I thought, man, if I use my speakers, I'm only going to get two hours a day. And so I got headphones first and then I got studio monitors and I learned the hard way that, you know, if you just get studio monitors, it's so much better than if you just get headphones. So, um, so there is a big difference there that you, that is really, you just don't want to mix those two up. Um, you know, like I said, there are going to be some people that are just going to jump over this. They're going to think, well, still I want to get headphones first. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I mean, it's your decision, but I'm telling you right now, um, if you ever want to be a professional at this, you're eventually going to have to get studio monitors, and you're eventually going to change your mind and say, yep, studio monitors are just so much better than running it on headphones. So um, so anyway, 
that's the deal with those. Now, from here on out, it's uh, so. So we said, like I said, we have computer, we have monitors, we have audio interface, we have headphones. It's two other things, and this is entirely your preference. Do you want to do live or do you want to do recording? Because I personally want to do recording, so my next thing would be I want to get a condenser microphone. And um, and other people, it might be like, well, I don't want to record people so much, but I do want to uh, do like those live performances, like with the with the uh, what's it called, Novation Launchpad or a MIDI controller, so I could actually do like DJ sets, and um, or maybe like a uh, a MIDI controller that's a keyboard, so I could do uh, synthesizers and stuff like that. So um, so there's you know uh, that it's just do you want to do live do you want to do recorded and then you'll kind of decide based on that what order those two go in. Um, personally, like I said, I'm a recording kind of guy. I'd much rather have someone and uh, have someone come in and record vocals for a track than I would rather um, get a live controller because I don't do live performances yet. I've thought about doing recorded live performances where I do a live performance, record it, and upload it onto YouTube. But that's something that I haven't really done yet, and it's not really something that I'm as interested in as I am with, you know, getting someone like having an original vocal track. That'd be so awesome. So, um, so that's up to you for those two, the order of those two. But um, otherwise, I do suggest getting those two last because um, they're kind of like icing on the cake, and not as much as making a huge difference in what you do. And then, like I said, re to reiterate from the beginning, software kind of bumps in in different places on this. I suggest getting a new synthesizer if you're using Logic. I suggest getting a new synthesizer. There's a couple options out there. I'm not going to talk about them. Um, we'll save that for later. But um, I suggest getting those before you get your studio monitors just because um, you don't need studio monitors to make a better synth. Um, but, uh, but I suggest getting it after you get a good computer so that you have a computer that can handle these better synthesizers. But, um, but at the same time, you don't need to worry about having studio monitors to be able to hear the synthesizers because they're just synthesizers. So, um, so that's kind of my suggestion by way of that one, uh, by way of samples, um, and, and like plugins, like compressors and limiters and stuff like that. I don't suggest getting any more of those until after you get studio monitors, because, um, you can't really utilize the compressors and stuff that you have, uh, to their full potential until you get studio monitors anyway. So why spend money on better ones when you can't even use the ones that you have right now as accurately as you could be using. So, um, so yeah, it just kind of depends also on what you have, this entire list. Like, if let's say, um, you know, you bought a, um, a condenser microphone when you first got started because you wanted to do vocals for your tracks. Then maybe instead of, um, instead of you know, worrying about the audio interface as, uh, as the, the third thing you need to get, maybe you want to get that first because that way you can actually use your condenser microphone and run it in through a clean preamp and just let it really shine. So, um, so there are, like I said, there are going to be things that are going to cause this thing to go, um, you know, this order to get kind of jumbled up. But uh, it's a little bit of your preference. Uh, like I said, the live and recording thing at the end, that's entirely your preference. These other things are kind of your preference. But anyway, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to point out the couple of things that are a really big deal here. The first one being, you know, uh, when to upgrade, like you really go somewhere, try it out, figure out, um, you know, figure out if you're actually being held back by your equipment or if you just want something new. And then the second thing being how much should you upgrade, you know, what's a reasonable price to spend and um, what's, you know, what do you have right now so so you, that you're not buying something that's too close to what you have and you're only getting a slight upgrade. And then finally, the third thing that I wanted to put a lot of emphasis on was just how much it's like a big divide between mixing on, um, on you know, studio monitors and headphones. You just have to really separate the two and realize that studio monitors are going to be a lot easier to mix on and they're going to translate a lot better to headphones than if you listen on headphones first and then go over to monitors. So, uh, sorry for the kind of cut there. The, the My video recording is apparently it's only running at 30 minutes max, so... Uh, I had to actually split this into two parts because it stopped recording on me. But uh, anyway, I hope this is information that was useful for you guys. Um, and uh, I, I hope that I didn't miss anything because I know I actually went, I overshot the 30 minute mark and did a lot of talking after that. And so I just, I'm like doing this as a wrap up part of the video. But anyway, um, I'll see if I, well, most of my videos for this Medium Pro Tip series are going to be a lot shorter than this. So I uh, usually won't have to worry about hitting that 30 minute mark. Anyway. A um, lot of information there. Um, just kind of chew on it. And remember, reviews are your friend. 
Go look at, at forums, tons of forums, and just kind of read people's opinions and stuff. Figure out what's popular, compare and contrast things, and uh, and then you'll you know you really get an idea of what to look for. So anyway, um, keep an eye out for my future videos in this series. Um, next one's gonna be on software and kind of looking at the details of um, of different types of things you should buy for software and kind of what I think is really important to look for and what isn't important to look for. And um, some I might talk about some common misconceptions and stuff like that. But anyway, next video is on software, and then I'm gonna be doing uh, the rest of the videos are all on hardware. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.